um, just a, a powerful community show of love for this young man and um, his mother or father going through what no parent should ever have to go through, in fact, the worst nightmare of any parent. This pain will be with us uh, for a long time um, and know that the arms of Coloradans are open with love and compassion for those affected family members left behind and, of course, the broader uh, community, particularly in South Boulder. Uh, today, uh, I'm here with Brigadier General Scott Sherman to discuss uh, the COVID situation and vaccine distribution updates. I first want to provide uh, some numbers of where we are today. We have 807 new cases. Now, uh, there's usually a dip on Mondays, sometimes even into Tuesdays, uh, just for the way that the reporting works. Um, but the, the overall numbers are, are roughly stable. About Usually, we've been about 800 to 1,300 people a day that are diagnosed with COVID. What we're really watching is hospitalizations, 324. So uh, it's, very, it's a very stubborn number. We're not, it, it's, not, it's not going down much. It briefly dipped below 300. It's back up. Uh, 324 of our fellow Coloradans uh, that are hospitalized from COVID. Uh, most will make it out. We wish them a speedy recovery, and, and tragically, some won't. Uh, and we have lost 6,092 people to COVID-19 in Colorado, and my thoughts and condolences are with the families and, and the loved ones. Um, you know, this is a very important moment for where we are in Colorado. It's more important than ever before to wear masks, to avoid social gatherings. Um, you know, for people who are vaccinated, which means, by the way, not just you got your vaccine and then the next day you go out, but for people who are vaccinated, absolutely, they can start socializing more. Um, but what, what does vaccinated mean? It means in the case of Moderna and Pfizer, First vaccine, uh, second vaccine, 21 or 28 days later, then two weeks after that second vaccine, you are vaccinated. That's when you really don't have to worry much. Johnson & Johnson, one vaccine, 15 days, two weeks later, you are vaccinated. Uh, but for those who are not, which is, um, you know, 80% or so of our population, uh, more than, than, than just as always, continue. I mean, the last thing we want is a setback here. Please avoid those socializing. I, I get it. We're, we're almost there. You'll be vaccinated soon, which is what we'll talk about today. You'll be safe soon, uh, but just a little while longer. So uh, today's news is we will be starting uh, vaccines uh, for the general public. Anybody can access uh, the life-saving, uh, highly effective, safe vaccine starting this Friday, April 2nd uh, in Colorado. Uh, for those, everybody 16 and up will be eligible for the Pfizer vaccine, everybody 18 and up for the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Those are the ages that they're approved for by the FDA. There are currently trials underway for 12 to 15. Uh, we're hopeful that that can occur before school gets back in the fall. Um, but this is a really important step that Colorado will be taking. doesn't mean that everybody in, in previous categories has been vaccinated. We'll get into kind of where we are with are most vulnerable, but it means we're now reaching this wide level of vaccine distribution. This week, we got over 400,000, about 413,000 vaccines in Colorado. They're all going into arms within a few days. We have our large vaccination sites up and going. We're ready for many more, and we expect that we will be getting more vaccines uh, even than the 413,000 in the coming weeks. Um, I want to acknowledge the, uh, the people that, of course, brought us to this point. I want to thank the scientists. I want to thank people that signed up to test the vaccines, including many Coloradans, not knowing if they were getting a placebo or the actual vaccine. We owe a debt of gratitude uh, to modern science and to those who were willing to take an experimental vaccine that allowed for us to reach where we are today. And achieving this level of immunity that we hope to in the next month or two in ending the pandemic really takes all of us working together. And uh, we're really excited to work with all kinds of distribution partners to be able to get the vaccine, life-saving vaccine into arms, pharmacies and hospitals, uh, larger scale clinics. And um, we know that all of Colorado uh, wants access to the vaccine. And just because just we're opening to all Colorado starting this Friday doesn't mean everybody can get it that first week either, right? You can do the math. Uh, we have you know, 5.7 million Coloradans, they're, they're not all over 16, but let's say it's, um, you know, 4.9, 5 million. We have about a million vaccinated so far. We'll get into these numbers, but um, even at 400,000 a week, 500,000 a week, not everybody can get it in that first week, right? So you will get it, 
whether um, whether it's the the week of April second or or the following week, the week after, the week after that, we still anticipate by mid to late May. So that's only less than two months, six to eight weeks from now. Everybody who wants the vaccine will have had the vaccine. So it'll take about six to eight weeks. That can be a frustrating six to eight weeks for the people that are in week six or week seven or week five, right? Others will get it next week, the week after. Uh, and there's multiple ways you can get it. Uh, we are stri- What we strive for is convenience, ease, uh, and uh, through we know that different people want to get it in different ways. Some like not getting out of their car and driving through. Some like getting it at their local pharmacy when they're picking up their prescription. Uh, some like getting it at their hospital. Some like getting it at community health clinics. Uh, some just want to get it and uh, are willing to get it wherever their name comes up first. Those are all valid. Those are all important. Uh, today we'll be announcing another way with mobile uh, mobile vaccination clinics that we'll be making available to the people of Colorado as well. Let me give an update of where we are and why we're able to take this step today. Um, as you know, at the very start of March, we reached our milestone of vaccinating 70% of Coloradans 70 and older. And today I'm proud to announce that, that uh, even more people 70 and up have come forward and been willing to be vaccinated. We're at 79% of our most vulnerable groups. So 79% of Coloradans 70 and up uh, have been vaccinated. And I want to make sure that people know that as ex- uh, we expand uh, the, the access to general public, we still want to prioritize anybody over 70 and certainly to a lesser extent anybody over 65 that hasn't gotten it yet for whatever reason. Please, if you're over 70, uh, we want to prioritize making sure that you're safe because you are at highest risk for this virus. In addition, um, we, we have now successfully vaccinated 71% of people aged 65 to 69. Another piece of very good news, uh, achieving 71% of 61, 65 to 69. And we hope that that increases as well. Uh, we would love to see both 65 to 70 and 70 and up get into the low 80s uh, in vaccine penetration to help end the pandemic rapidly. And now just this morning, uh, we have now reached 70% of the over 1.2 million Coloradans that are aged 60 and older. So that is very good news. You can still see it 53% of the 60 to 64. We expect many more this week, uh, including through this weekend. Keep in mind that while we're opening the vaccines to everybody Friday, that's because in some areas of the state, they're ready to do that right away. Many of the vaccines for next weekend are already booked, and and they're booked by people 50 and up, which is wonderful. They're going to get in. But if you're 49 and you're saying, I can't find anything for this coming weekend, that's probably true because many of them have already made appointments that are in the current eligibility factor uh, age. Now, if you can find one, you can certainly get it. Uh, part of the thing, part of the issue is we don't want anybody turned away from getting a vaccine when you get an appointment. We've heard cases of that across our state. Uh, many areas have indicated they're ready to move forward with everybody. And so uh, we are moving forward with everybody. But again, keep in mind that many people already have their appointments set up for this next weekend. And, and they set them up while it was um, the phase one before. So they're mostly taken up by the 15 up or pre-existing conditions. But this is very exciting news that we are now at 70% of, P- of every Coloradan 16 older have gotten their first dose. That brings the total number of Coloradans vaccinated to 1.5 million, but about 1 million that are fully vaccinated. So about a million people uh, fully vaccinated and a million five that uh, got their first dose. In that fully vaccinated number are also people that got the one dose of Johnson & Johnson. They didn't need a second dose, uh, so they're in there as well. So this is very exciting news for where we are, where we will be. Uh, every day we're getting closer to ending the pandemic, but it is not over yet. Please, if, if you haven't been vaccinated especially, wear a mask. Avoid socializing with others. If you have been vaccinated, it's so wonderful to be able to see our, especially our older Coloradans, rejoin uh yeah you know my my family went out to eat for the first time in a while um a few days ago and it was great to see um older coloradans enjoying something that they uh have um stayed away from uh from fear of their lives for last year because they're confident in uh in the highly effective vaccine so it's really great to see folks who have been vaccinated re-emerging and for those who haven't please continue to show a lot of caution the disease the, the virus is prevalent uh it is widespread it is very easy to, uh, to contract, and uh, we have over 300 Coloradans currently in the hospital for it. I want to thank our vaccine team at the state, led by Scott Bookman and Brigadier General Sherman, uh, all of our other emergency aid workers. 
Um, I also want to talk about um, the community vaccination clinics. Um, since December, uh, we've really been focused on how we can get the life-saving vaccine out into the community. And we knew that as more vaccines became available, we needed to make sure that we're able to serve some of the medically underserved Coloradans. Remember, ending the pandemic for uh, all of us ends it for every one of us, meaning we all have an interest in other people being vaccinated. I mean, we should all celebrate every time somebody else gets vaccinated. So we need to serve those that are uninsured, uh, immigrant communities, et cetera. That's why we launched Vaccines for All Community Vaccination Sites, uh, which we are focused on uh, across the state. These are the large-scale drive-through sites that are now up and going. The, only, the final one that will be going April 1st is the Ball Arena in Denver. The others are all going. Five locations are open, and they've administered 35,000 doses. Now, why do we have these? It's because we've basically maxed out the normal ways we can distribute the vaccine. Pharmacies are doing as much as they can. And by the way, if you have a pharmacy and you're able to do the vaccine, we want you to sign up. Please sign up. So all the major chains have. They're all getting as much as they can use. Uh, many of the minor chains have. But any pharmacy listening to this that wants to give the vaccine, we have the vaccine for you. Please sign up. But they can only do so much. Pharmacies, each, each site, depending on the pharmacy, they do 80 a day, they do 100 a day, they do 50 a day. They, they can do what they can do. So they're maxed out. Uh, hospitals are largely maxed out. Um, each of the major systems say, uh, you know, we can do 30,000 a week, we can do 40,000 a week. They're largely very close to their maximum, if not at it. Doesn't mean they couldn't push a little further, but uh, we want them. They've been great partners, uh, all, UC Health, Centura, uh, SCL, uh, and we want to make sure they're comfortable with the number that they get. And also we hold them, of course, accountable for using every dose they get within a few days. Uh, and now, on top of that, once we've maxed out pharmacies, maxed out hospitals, maxed out community health clinics, we're getting more and more vaccine, which is why we, we, we have these, these larger scale clinics to be able to make sure that we're able to use that increased dosage over the amount that kind of our normal system can do and that we get it quickly into arms. So uh, Adams County, uh, Dick Sporting Goods is open, uh, El Paso, uh, Broadmoor World Arena. Mesa County Convention Center, the Ranch Events Complex, Colorado State Fairgrounds. I know there were some issues at Dick's uh, associated with opening it. Um, those should largely be resolved uh, over the next few days. There were some issues in Pueblo around opening it. Those are to be expected usually in the first couple days. They get resolved operationally. And one of the reasons we're confident expanding access to the vaccine to everybody is these six sites will all be up and going full throttle by uh, April 2nd, able to administer as many doses of the vaccine as we get. Here's how to sign up. Uh, you can sign up for any of these sites. There's phone numbers in English y Espanol. There's a website. Uh, this is probably one of the quickest, easiest ways to get your vaccine. You don't literally don't get out of your car. Uh, it takes, uh, I know, that, again, there are issues at Dix this, 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 this uh, weekend, but talking to people who have been through these, I've visited many, <clears throat> you're in and out in 20, 25 minutes. Um, they're very efficient. Uh, they are very convenient for people, um, especially if you can now get, you know, if, if there's two or three people in the family, you can all do it at once. Uh, if you can get the, the appointment to do that, uh, we, we encourage that. It makes it easier. Um, but these are all very easy ways to, to get it done. <clears throat> Again, <clears throat> many of these are already full right now. So you might want to just note these, these, these websites and sign up next week or the week after. But this will be a very easy way to do it. Um, they're, they're generally now full from the 50 and up category uh, over the next few days, but they'll be opening up more slots. And as soon as we know we're getting out more vaccine, they open up the additional slots for scheduling. Uh, we never want to schedule for vaccines that we don't know we're going to get because that would be uh, terrible to tell somebody you have an appointment, but we, we don't know the vaccine. So as soon as the federal government tells us the exact numbers, we have estimates, but when they give us the exact numbers and dates, it opens up for vaccines. And uh, we encourage people to sign up uh, and get vaccinated. Every vaccine is free. There is no copay. There is no charge. If somebody is trying to charge you, it is likely a scam. Do not get that vaccine. Uh, it is free uh, and it is simple. Your insurance doesn't matter. Whether you don't have insurance doesn't matter. We all have an interest in getting folks uh, successfully vaccinated. You do, first and foremost. I do in protecting ourselves but we all do in ending the pandemic for everybody else as well. Each vaccine is a step closer to getting back to normal. And these six sites are going to be a big part of that, along with the equity clinics and the mobile clinics that I'll be talking about now. So 
We also uh, look at medically underserved communities with equity clinics. These are folks that might not have access to a drive through facility or even a car. Uh, we've done them in 30 counties. We've had 111 uh, equity clinics in medically served, underserved areas. We have uh, 75 scheduled through April 6th that are going to deliver another 30,400 doses. Uh, trailer parks, uh, parking lots of, of uh, predominantly black churches, uh, community service organizations in the immigrant community. We're working with Nine Health to use their established infrastructure and community partnerships to have clinics in the same communities. The equity outreach team will continue providing staffing support to clinics wherever help is needed. So uh, any community organization that serves underserved Coloradans, we will, would love your help, just as we call for any additional pharmacies that can take vaccine. And by the way, when we say take vaccine, and we say here, <clears throat> it means use vaccine within three or four days. Um, no one's interested in, we obviously never give you any more if you take vaccine and it's not all used within three or four days. So uh, what we're interested in is who can accurately schedule, get it done. Uh, any more pharmacies that are willing to sign up, we have vaccine for you. Any more equity clinics uh, that are community partners, we'd love to do it. <clears throat> and then whatever we have available, uh, after pharmacies and equity clinics, that's where we use that surge capacity of those drive-through sites. So they're very flexible. They're nowhere near their maximum. Uh, and we can add additional doses into those and get them scheduled very, very easy. Another thing we're launching very soon, really within the next week or so, are four mobile vaccine buses. Pretty snazzy looking. You might see these on the roads. You can always honk your support. Uh, these are also designed to reach medically underserved areas. Um, we uh, use 100% of the doses uh, within a few days, and this will help serve um, uh, rural communities, underserved urban communities. Um, we'll be able to simply uh, set up a temporary vaccine stand-up location in a much more easy, automated way. Uh, and they're booked, I believe, uh, they're going to be starting in the next week or so, and we'll be publishing their schedule. I think they're going to start in southeast Colorado and southern Colorado. Uh, we have, uh, we're going to be deploying four of these um, here in the next week or so, and we're very, very excited about that as well. So it's really about making it easy for people, right? It's your local pharmacy. It's a drive-through clinic. It's your hospital. It's a, a, mobile, uh, a mobile vaccination unit that pulls up in your neighborhood. Uh, we expect that there is enough vaccine to get every Coloradan who wants a vaccine done by the end of May. And may even be mid-May, mid to late May <clears throat> is when every Colorado will be able to have it. So when you hear that, it'll take six to, eight, uh, six to eight weeks to get through everybody. That means every day we're vaccinating people with every vaccine we get. But when you get 413,000 one week, maybe we'll get hopefully get more next week. We'll see once we get the final quantities. Um, it still takes a while to get through everybody. But we know that getting through everybody also means how do we make it convenient for you, easy for you. Uh, minimize the disruption to your life if you're working, if you have two jobs, if you have a kid at home. And mobile clinics are going to be an important part of that. I'm going to turn it over to Brigadier General Sherman to provide an update on the anticipated vaccine supply uh, in the next few weeks that we're, we're basing this opening to everybody on April 2nd on. General Sherman. Thanks, Governor. Hey, good morning, everyone. Just want to give you an update. Next slide, please. Uh, this is for March 28th. This week, we're receiving 422,000 uh, doses. We got a 19,000 uh, increase on Pfizer and Moderna. We got 32,000 Johnson & Johnson vaccine this week, and then the federal entities, which is the Federal Retail Pharmacy Program, the Federal Qualified Health Clinics, the uh, Veterans Administration, Department of Defense, the Bureau of Prisons, and the Indian Health Service received over 115,000 doses. For the weeks going forward, we do expect here in April, we may, we're being told that Pfizer and Moderna are going to be increasing by about a million a week. So that'll be an increase of 16,000 for Colorado. And then uh, J Johnson & Johnson, uh, they fixed their supply issues. So they have, uh, we expect the uh, Johnson & Johnson vaccine or their quantity to increase significantly. And then that will also increase, <clears throat> pardon me, in the federal, federal entities. So for April 4th, It'll be above 372,000 and April 11, 391,000. Of course, that'll increase a lot more as we later this week as we get the uh, as we find out the increase in the Pfizer, Moderna, and the Johnson and Johnson. So I just want to point out that uh, that's why we have a plus at the bottom. This does not mean the vaccine supply is going down from the feds. It means that we don't yet know the number for those other weeks. We have the estimate. We know it's not going to be less than that. But we're not yet including the Johnson & Johnson supply because we don't know the exact number in the April 4th or April 11th date. We also expect that the federal entities number will be higher. How much higher, we don't know, but it has been steadily going up. 
So uh, we're confident that that supply level will likely uh, continue to increase in the coming weeks. Right. Thanks, Governor. Next slide, please. So as the governor reiterated, and he talked about it April 2nd, um, with the progress that we made and certainly how we were expecting the supply to increase, we will open to the general public on April 2nd. Governor, back to you. Thank you. And patience is key, right? Uh, you've seen the numbers. If we get 400,000 uh, uh, a week, you know it'll take um, six to eight weeks to get through everybody. And everybody will have an equal chance of getting a life-saving vaccine. We still want to prioritize people over 70, people over 65 plus. Many providers are doing that. Many community health clinics are doing that. Uh, frankly, if you are, you know, 65 and up and haven't gotten it yet, uh, we want to make sure that you get that. And we encourage our providers to prioritize our most vulnerable. But other than that, it's open to everybody. And uh, as of Friday, and we're, we're very excited that uh, we'll be able to get everybody who wants to get the vaccine done within six to eight weeks, uh, a very reasonable uh, period of time. And uh, our distribution infrastructure includes thousands of partners. Uh, they will no longer need to screen or exclude people. That, that adds operational efficiency to the administration of the vaccine. The six large-scale community vaccination sites, the equity clinics, the mobile clinics, and uh, we're confident that uh, this will be this this will ease and facilitate the delivery of the increased quality of vac quantity of vaccines that are now coming to our state. <clears throat> our major healthcare providers, community health partners, are already ready ready to schedule appointments online or over the phone. As I said, many many of them have already re already scheduled through next weekend or into next week in the, in that current 50 and up category. So if you're not in that category or pre-existing condition, it might be a week or two before you can get an appointment. Uh, and some will take even longer, as we indicated. Um, but we do anticipate that everyone who wants to get vaccinated will be able to get it by the end of May. So mid to late May, six to eight weeks from the opening of the vaccine to everybody. Uh, what an amazingly fast period of time uh, to be able to uh, make sure that everybody who wants it will be able to get vaccinated. Uh, everybody who is uh, 16 or up, uh, remember, if you're 16 or 17, you can only get the Pfizer vaccine right now. Uh, it's the only one approved for 16 and 17-year-olds. If you're 18 or up, you can get any of the three, and you can sign up to schedule an appointment uh, or get more information by going to cocovidvaccine.org or dialing 877-268-2926. We also displayed the, the sites for the, the six different large-scale sites. Each of them has their own scheduling interface. Um, you can also check with local pharmacies as well. And um, again, we are encouraging people that were in previous phases that haven't gotten vaccinated yet, we're encouraging providers to prioritize your appointment. And so that would, in general, it wouldn't so much be the self-scheduling pharmacies that do that, but like hospitals, community health clinics, we really are encouraging them if you are 65 and up and, and haven't gotten it yet, uh, and, and there are some that might have been hesitant initially or just didn't make any calls or do it, uh, we, we, we really want you to come forward and, and get protected now. Uh, you're protecting yourself first and foremost, but as a state, we, what are our concerns, things like hospital capacity, et cetera, uh, if you are 65 and up, you are much more likely to be hospitalized. You are much more likely to have a severe uh, reaction, including potential death from COVID. Uh, so please, um, it's great that we're, we're um, close to 80% of 70 and up, but you know, if we can get to 85%, that would, that would, uh, we'd, all, we'd all sleep a lot easier as well. The success of our auto state uh, providing vaccine to everybody really also makes sure that Coloradans continue to do our part um, during this time. Vaccine is free for all, uh, but it's important that, especially for those who are not yet fully vaccinated, please be careful. Uh, we are not through this. There's enough people that haven't been vaccinated and haven't had it where there absolutely could be another increase. Uh, the projections all show that. It's up to us to prevent that. So if you're not fully vaccinated, please, please wear a mask, avoid social gatherings, be careful. You are so close to being able to return to normal. You'll be able to get this vaccine next week, the week after, the week after that, very, very soon. Um, and remember, you're not fully immune until two weeks after that second vaccine in the case of Moderna and Pfizer, or your first vaccine in the case of Johnson & Johnson. Um, if we can keep it up a little bit longer, uh, then we will have a fairly normal summer because with the final folks getting vaccinated in May, it means their immunity in June, 
it means that by July, uh, we, we should have broad, widespread immunity across the population, uh, fairly widespread, of course, by June as well. Uh, and uh, we will largely be able to return to normal. Then we will simply be hopeful that <clears throat> the FDA approves for the 12 to 15-year-old cohort uh, some of the vaccinations. The uh, 11 and under cohort is, is running further behind. That's just enrolled. Uh, it's unlikely those, uh, it's very unlikely that would be available for fall. That would be next winter uh, at the earliest. But um, we're hopeful that the uh, 12 to 15 cohort um, is approved. We certainly will have the vaccines uh, for it to be done over summer if it's approved in time for kids to return to school in fall. Uh, thank you all. Stay safe. Be careful. We're almost there. Now is not the time to let up social distancing. Wear a mask. Avoid large get-togethers. Just put them off another month or two. Uh, if you're vaccinated, you absolutely can be confident and go about more and, and do your thing. Um, but if you're not, the virus is still widespread in the state of Colorado and across the country. Uh, we want to make sure that you've been through a lot uh, of sacrifice this last year. Um, we want to make sure that the sacrifice isn't for nothing. You don't want to get this deadly virus in the final few weeks and months of the pandemic, uh, just as you're becoming eligible for a vaccination. So let's be careful, Colorado. Thank you. We'll be happy to take some questions. Hey, Governor, this is Gabrielle Franklin from Fox 31. Um, had a quick question about COVID-19 cases in the state. Seems that variant cases are rising right now. Uh, we've got about 800 total cases of concern. Mm -hmm. So with more vaccines out in the community and with the doubt in, the, um, in effect, is there any concern that we're reopening a little too fast? So um, this is a race against the clock to safely vaccinate people while variants are on the rise. All of the major variants <clears throat> are increasing in Colorado. There's no, no one is surprised by that. It's because they spread faster than uh, the original strain. The good news is that the vaccines are still highly effective against the variants. So uh, that's why we need to be patient in these final few weeks. We need to wear masks, which also work against the variants. We need to have social distancing, avoid large get-togethers with other people, avoid seeing others in indoor settings that don't live under your own roof. Um, if we can keep that up you know, for the next uh, few weeks and month, we will uh, win this race in the clock, race in the clock against the variants. <clears throat> hey, Governor, Jesse Paul here at the Colorado Sun. Um, two questions for you. One is, how are you gonna ensure that folks who are in phase 1v4 and 1v3 are gonna get vaccinated before the general public? We're already hearing from a lot of folks. And then I'll ask you the follow-up, I guess, after that. Do you say the folks that are in the current phase that we're in are able to get vaccinated? Right. Are, are yeah. they going to be prioritized over the general public? So first of all, we, we miss you, Jesse. I think this might be one of the, if not the first, this might be one of the first so you haven't been with us in person. But maybe that's a sign that we're in the, uh, the uh, ebbing days of the pandemic. I sure hope it is. Um, we hope to see you again soon. Um, so we encourage our providers and partners to prioritize the most vulnerable. We separately are engaged in working with, for instance, restaurants and essential workers on clinics, just as we did, you remember when we did teachers over a three week period while we were doing, I believe at that time, it was people age 65 and up and then 60 and up. Uh, we are now also very aggressively partnering. We did JBS in Cargill with grocery store chains, with restaurants, to make sure that we have the quantities needed for our frontline workers that will be done during this period. So it will be and is being made available, uh, and it, largely through employers and through large site-based clinics for those in that workforce. Uh, people that are 50 and up uh, or that have pre-existing conditions, uh, already should be scheduled and hopefully are, including over the next week or two. Uh, and then as it opens up to everybody else, we want to make, we want to encourage our providers, particularly our healthcare related providers. And I know that hospitals are doing this, community health clinics are doing this to continue to prioritize older Coloradans. But the single biggest risk factor being age, uh, over 70 represents 78% of the deaths, 40% of the hospitalizations. When you go to 16 up, it's a majority of hospitalizations and uh, eight, over 85% of deaths. 
Uh, so though that's really where the biggest break is. There's not, you know, while there is a difference, of course, between a 52 year old and a 32 year old, and it is more risky for a 52 year old, it's not nearly of the same order of magnitude as a 72 year old compared to a 52 year old. So, uh, many counties are ready to open it up to everybody. We're excited by that. We are as a state, uh, we have the infrastructure in place. It'll take six to eight weeks to get it, but everybody who wants it will be able to get protected. Jesse had a follow up, Jesse. And then my second question is, yeah, and my second question is, uh, state lawmakers here at the Capitol are talking about a potential statewide uh, assault weapons ban, and I wonder if you have any interest in that, if you think that's something that they should pursue. Well, historically, Colorado has led the way in gun safety reform, and we've closed gun show loopholes following Columbine, instituted universal background checks. Uh, red flag legislation. This year, the state is contemplating measures to help ensure safe so storage of firearms and also require reporting for lost and stolen guns and a waiting period uh, closing the Charleston loophole. And I'll certainly review any legislation that reaches my desk to help uh, protect the people of Colorado while protecting our Second Amendment rights. Governor, good morning. It's David Clue at Denver 7. It has been weeks since Custer County said it would lift all COVID restrictions and not follow state guidance. You and CDPHE have said that you would hold them accountable if they move forward with that plan, and they have. Have you taken any actions? And if not, why not? And I do have a follow-up, sir. Well, yeah, the whole state of Colorado has to follow the laws of, of Colorado, and, and they do. Um, we are we embrace the direction of local control we've certainly integrated from the very start uh working with our cities our counties um what would you like to to open uh, ahead of the state and and how can we help you do it there's areas of the state like uh, mesa county where they never had to close their restaurants and uh and and we're looking forward to more formally turning over that uh authority to this, this the local jurisdictions with even less consultation with the state really over the next few weeks i think we have a, a target date of mid-april around april 16th for when we'll be able to make that transition but no actions against custer county from your office well they wouldn't be <clears throat> they wouldn't be from my office that would be a question for cdphe um obviously if there are restaurants or businesses anywhere that are violating capacity restrictions they are of course subject to the law and sanctions there have been in different parts of the state businesses that have engaged in dangerous health practices that have uh, temporarily lost their their liquor licenses so um you know again everywhere is subject to the law of the state uh, there's a lot of great work that's being done at the county level to reduce the uh, the risk of covid we support that work and uh you know everybody of course has to follow the the laws of colorado and sir, do you see a time perhaps later this year where there would be a need for people to prove that they've been vaccinated in order to say enter a restaurant, a concert venue or a sporting event, whether that be a wristband or a vaccination card or a code on their phone? I think that there might be some uh, private entities that, that choose to do that, uh, you know, to make sure that they can, their customers have the peace of mind that they're safe. Uh, there's, you know, some companies are, are doing for that with their public facing employees to inspire customer confidence. Uh, there could be others that, that do it with customers. Uh, I think largely, uh, you know, once people have the peace of mind, knowing that they're protected, you see that they are willing to go out and, and be around others a lot more. And I, again, we, we see that with many of our seniors coming back to go out to, to restaurants and, and enjoy themselves. Um, because they're now safe because of the vaccine. And I think we'll see that more as it reaches uh, additional age groups. Governor Steve Steger from Nine News. Uh, you had mentioned the issue at Dick's Sporting Goods Park this weekend. We heard from some people who were in line there for about three hours yesterday waiting for a vaccine. I'm wondering what you understand to be the issue at Dick's Sporting Goods Park and, and why you have confidence that the scale up will be smooth after an issue like that. Let me go to General Sherman on that in a moment. But uh, yeah, when, when, when we first open these sites, there's often operational issues. Uh, Centura is aware of them. I believe this one was largely a staffing issue. Uh, it will be worked out as they were in Pueblo as well. Uh, the goal with those sites is in and out within 30 minutes. Uh, other sites have achieved that. I'm very confident that Dick's will in the coming days. General? Yeah, good morning, Steve. Yeah, so they didn't have enough staffing. Uh, they also had people that were cutting in line. They had a meeting last night with Centura between them and their, con their subcontractors to order to work out the problems. All the uh, Centura process improvement personnel are on site today to improve that, and it's certainly their uh, goal to have that fixed quickly. 
and we've also given them a uh, list of other contractors that could provide staffing for them. So that's what we're working right now, Steve. General, uh, what kind of staffing was the issue? Was it an issue with parking, uh, traffic control? Like what was it? As I understand, they didn't have enough. Uh, they had employees that no showed, so they had uh, they had to work that out. They didn't have another contractor on hand, so we're giving them other contractors. So if they have more no shows, they can reach out to other contractors to get personnel on site. Hello, Governor Polis and General Sherman. This is Vinny Del I said. Bloomberg News in Denver. Uh, this is an economic question for the governor. Uh, what is your outlook for Colorado's economy as the state um, heads for herd immunity this summer? And do you see unemployment falling significantly this year by the end of this year? Thank you very much. Well, look, uh, this pandemic has caused a global recession, interruptions in the supply chain, uh, particularly in Colorado, obviously, where the tourism industry is important. Uh, it's essentially zeroed out our international tourism. We've still had um, uh, fairly strong in the scheme of things domestic tourism, not as strong as usual. Uh, I do think that we are poised for a strong economic recovery. Uh, um, coupled with the, stimu the stimulus work that the federal government has done, along with the state stimulus that we've worked with Republicans and Democrats in the legislature on. Uh, we're now engaged in a listening session about the use of uh, additional federal stimulus dollars to help uh, create opportunity, grow our economy, uh, and build back stronger than before. We had our first two sessions yesterday with Western Colorado and Southern Colorado, uh, where we heard a lot of great ideas uh, from leaders will continue to do that regionally as well as in important sectors. I think there's a lot of pent-up demand in the economy. Um, savings are higher. I think once consumer confidence increases, once as people are vaccinated and know that they're safe, uh, they are getting out. They are starting to spend money. And some of that means spending money coming to Colorado, enjoying Colorado for residents here. It means going out, enjoying uh, uh, dining out or shopping in a local store. So I think it's natural when there's a lot of uncertainty People um, hold on to their money a little bit more. That's why savings rate went up so much. Uh, I think it's also natural that uh, not yet, but as this ends here, May, June, uh, people will have the confidence to uh, return to their normal levels of spending, uh, and that will help create jobs here in Colorado and across the country. Hola, buenas, uh, buenos días. Gobernador, habla Jackie López de Telemundo Denver. Me gustaría saber si ahora que la vacuna va a estar disponible para toda la población, ¿planea usted extender el uso de cubrebocas? Y una segunda pregunta, ¿para cuándo cree usted que el Estado reabriría la economía en sí ahora que la vacuna estará disponible para todos? Antes de Gracias. recibir la vacuna, usando una tapa boca es absolutamente necesario e importante para uh, salvar su vida y la vida de su familia también. Nuestros números de casos eh, están más bajos y la mayoría de las personas mayores de edad están ya vacunadas. Uh, por esto nos sentimos cómodas dándole a los gobiernos locales más control en cuanto a qué restricciones deben tener de acuerdo a las necesidades de sus comunidades en no todas partes del estado y también el estatus del virus en este uh, lugar. Uh, en cuanto a las tapabocas, es muy importante uh, usarlo es, um, y también tener una distancia entre otras personas uh, de más de seis, uh, seis pies cuando puede. Muchas gracias, gobernador. Good morning, Governor. Charles Ashby from the Grand Junction Daily Sentinel. It sounds like you may have answered my question in Spanish here, but I'll ask it in English. Um, so, as you know, the mask, statewide mask order is set to expire in about a month, or I'm sorry, in about a week. Um, and we've got a number of counties that have reverted back to yellow, but many more going to green. What are your thoughts about um, the mask order, uh, at least for counties that are in the green category? Are you going to let that be a local control issue? And I do have a quick follow-up. Yeah, we, I think we have the, really the same outlook as the basic county commissioners in the same time frame. Uh, we believe that in mid-April, uh, we are uh, real for more formally devolving uh, the uh, authority of the local area. Really, the only types of events that will remain um, 
under state guidance will be large scale events, thousands of people together. It doesn't mean they can't occur. It just means that there need to be thoughtful health guidelines like there are for the Rockies at Coors Field, like there are for other major events. Otherwise, uh, that'll be returning local. Uh, and so what that means is um, uh, we're likely to have about a two week um, uh, extension of that mask order to get us to that point where we more formally devolve the authority. We're also expecting that we will continue the rest of the school year uh, with the mask requirement in schools because we don't want to risk the return to in-person education. Uh, it's been a very important priority for me, for my administration, to make sure that kids can uh, go to school in person. Uh, that is happening across our state, thankfully, uh, and we want to uh, make sure that they're able to continue the final uh, month of the school year, month, two, two months of the school year at that point. Uh, and and uh, in a safe way that doesn't interrupt the return to in-person learning. Did you have a follow-up question? Uh, yes, I did, Governor. Uh, about your buses that are going around, I uh, uh, heard you said there were going to be four to start with. Are there going to be more than that? And uh, considering the nature of that, is that going to be restricted to just the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Um, I believe so, right? So they're, they're yes, it right. is, yeah. Governor. They're, they're just doing the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. There are only plans for four. Uh, we expect that will meet the need. Um, with the six vaccination sites and the buses, we, accept them, we expect them to be deployed through May, perhaps into early June. Uh, the vaccination sites, who are also dealing with Pfizer, Moderna, will will likely continue into June because people who get their first vaccine in May will need the second one in June. But all of that should be retired by the end of June. The buses and the vaccination sites at that point going forward, uh, picking up folks who still want it but delayed getting it would simply be pharmacies, uh, doctors, hospitals, etc. All right, thank you, Governor, and thank you for the happy birthday message. Thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hello, this is Meg Wingeter from the Denver Post. Um, you said you've emphasized repeatedly how important it is to keep wearing masks and distancing um, until um, most of are fully vaccinated, but said the, um, the mask could lift or be substantially scaled back. And given that um, hospitalizations and cases aren't really going down anymore, what do you expect to change in the next two weeks? Uh, well, I don't. I don't expect much to change in the next two weeks. What's 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 changing is more and more Coloradans are getting immunity through vaccination. So you will have uh, people that are getting their second vaccine right now, last weekend, next weekend, that by mid-April will be immune who are currently not immune. Uh, so that is what has been rapidly changing over the last few months. We now have. Uh, we'd have, we have to call the numbers up, but I believe it's about 1.5 million Coloradans who've gotten at least one dose and a million Coloradans that are immune. Uh, and as that number continues to increase, I think our local governments will feel more confidence in, um, in, in, in less of the distancing restrictions uh, that, they, that they might implement you know, through April. I had a little trouble hearing your question, so I, I hope that answered it. You go ahead and ask a follow-up because I think we had a little trouble on this end with the technology. Um, that was, I think you okay. got um, my question. Thank you. Okay, good. Last question. Who do we have? John. John? Do we have a John? Hello. Hello, go ahead. Hi, Governor, can you hear me? John Daly here, Colorado Public Radio. Um, I was just wanting to follow up on the statewide mass mandate. Can you, uh, I was a little confused at your answer. Um, do you anticipate continuing that? And, and uh, if so, how long and, or, or when might that, might that end? Well, we've uh, so I think what we are uh, what we are doing is um, finding a way to make sure that the bulk of the COVID response is localized in a thoughtful way. Working with our commissioners, working with our mayors, our our target date for that is is April sixteenth. Uh, I'm confident that barring any uh, unexpected uh, major change in the trajectory of the virus, uh, that we will be able to continue, uh, working with that date. Uh, we'll certainly have more details on that as, as we roll that out in the, in the coming week.